Welcome to the finals of the 2006 Dynamic Italian Open in Montfalcone between Imran Majid from the UK and Thomas Engert from Germany. I'm Rob Suke from Germany and with me here again is Daryl Peach, the number one ranked player in the UK for the last two years. Hi Ralph and uh, welcome everyone. We're in for a, a bit of a umdinger here. Um, everything's set up to be a, a classic match. We've got Thomas Engert, the favourite I would think, um, but Imran's been playing some great pool. Absolutely, I mean we watched both players <coughs> winning their res respective uh, semi-final matches and uh, they're both won in an impressive way. So it's, it's hard to predict this one, but one thing I could definitely say is we have uh, controversy here because Imran with his slow medium break trying to control the cue ball and Thomas with a powerful break. That's definitely, a, you know, the biggest difference between both of them. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, he's just drawing back just past the three there. Yeah. Straight on, straight in on the two. Just bumped the cue ball out into the middle of the table. Well, Imran won the leg, very important, always. Because, you know, you will get that at final break if it comes to a, an 8-8 eight eight at the end. Which is... Which happens quite often in those Euro Tour matches. And what we also know is that if Imran is going to win this match here. He's going to jump up to the second place in the overall rankings. And uh, with Thomas, <laughs> he's still in number one because he came in as number one, made it to the finals, so there's no doubt that he's going to stay on top of the rankings. And I think if even if Imran were to lose his final, he would move to up to number three anyway, which is uh, no mean feat. Yep, that's true. When you think he's only been playing on the Euro Tour for two years now, like myself, and uh, he's a class act. Yeah, definitely come from from nowhere to right on the top. <laughs> and with this huge crowd here, behind him, because we have a packed house here in Montfalcone for the first time, which uh, is great to see. And, uh, well, unfortunately for Thomas, you know, the, the majority comes uh, or is, you know, behind Imran, because we have a lot of British guys here. So it's, it's a fight between Germany and England at the table there, and between Germany and England as well here <laughs> in the commentary <laughs> booth. <laughs> Let's see who has the better end. Well, Thomas off the break, and as I already mentioned, I'm gonna probably all gonna see a hard break here because that's the way he was breaking all the way in the tournament. Making a ball, good cue ball control, and he has a shot on the one ball with the two close by. So for the first shot, not much to do. Pretty straightforward. And also, the five ball is near the two as well, so... Should be a comfortable start for uh, Thomas here. Yeah, it's always very important to get that first game under your belt. Yeah, just to settle the nerves. Funny around the five, not the ideal position. Yeah, he wanted to be much straighter on this shot into the corner or further down to play it in the side. Yep. Now the cue ball's running away slightly, and uh, he's just got to. Might run into the eight ball when he tries to go three rails, so it's. 
you've got to take a lot of care over this. Molly's just got away from him. But I guess he hooked himself. Yeah, and this is um, <coughs> not the start that he wanted, especially when he had such a good break and it looked like a pretty straightforward run out. Yep. But as we've seen before, one bad shot, it leads to another, and before you know it, you're out of position. I don't know if you can see much of the six ball to play. No, I guess not. So he's looking at the kick option here. Hit the rail first into the six. You know, might try to kick it into the opposite side pocket. I don't know about that. Well, got away with it. Yeah. <coughs> Although he, he might find himself hooked again here. Um, can't see exactly on the angle, but I think Imran can just play this straight forward, full in the face, and just follow the cue ball up behind the eight ball. Stuck up behind the eight, yeah. I guess that's the shot. It's got to have a good speed control, though. Yeah, he doesn't want to have a touch like an elephant on this one. No, definitely not. I play the safe way, just to make sure that not to overrun it, but I don't know if, if that's good enough. It's hard to tell from here. Yeah, because he's not got right up to the 8-ball, it's an option for not Thomas yet. to jump the, sh jump the eight you ball. You can actually see the 6-ball. I don't know if you can see the, the full ball, but you can definitely see the edge. Or maybe you can you know, kick quite comfortable from behind, leave yeah. the cue ball on the left side of the table and you know bring the six ball down table hit the right cushion and then back yeah. to the behind to the, the nine end. ball yeah. yeah well we could see the other side of it i think he's got away with that yeah <laughs> two, two rolls back to back now Mm. So it's turning into a bit of a weird frame, this. Weird rack, sorry. And uh, Imran with not many options here. No. Maybe just try to separate. Bring the six ball to the right side and the cue ball to the left side. Like that. And that leaves him maybe a jump shot. I don't know. The distance between the cue ball and the nine ball is longer then between the six and the nine so if he jumps it he might jump the cue ball off the tail that's a very critical shot here but on the other hand he could play rail first and try to send the six ball down table basically just slow roll and leave the cue ball behind the eight but it's a you need a, a touchy feeling for that one yeah yes yeah. it's a delicate shot That's what he's tried. And he hits it. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. The, the crowd seems happy with it, but I don't know. If I think you can see the full ball. I can definitely see the left side of uh, the six. And it's if in a cross corner. Yep, if you can see the left, you can pot it. But he hit it very oh. well, no doubt about that. Yeah, it's very unlucky there. And a great shot from yeah. here. Great shot. Of course, like most British players, uh, Imran's got a somewhat of a snooker background, so very clean potter of the ball. Crisp potting. 
as you saw there. Just couldn't create more of an angle on the seven ball, unfortunately for him. And now he has to work a little bit with the eight ball, which is still a bit tricky because it's you know way below the nine, so he has to either draw it back or I guess he's going all the way through, following through with inside English. It's a perfect. Yep. Imran <laughs> Majid wins the second game, leading two games to zero. And with himself breaking in the third rack, gives him now definitely the advantage. Yeah, it's exactly the start he wanted. Thomas looks focused, though. Uh, you know, uh, it's. He's not going to be panicking just yet. And he didn't do anything wrong yet, to be honest. No. Of course he got on... You know, he, he played one poor position, but, uh, you know, that, that can happen. Especially yeah. at the beginning of the, of the match, we're not really in it yet. Yeah. As, as, as most people know, Pool, especially nine ball, is a, is a rhythm game. And if you can't find your rhythm, then it's hard to to play your best. Imran making three balls. Wow. Probably would rather have seen a few balls still on the table, but I guess he has a good chance on the four. Yeah, he's got a shot on the four. He's uh, slightly impeded by the, the seven ball with his. Uh, with his bridge, but I think he's only got to play this plain ball, so he'll, he'll be just basically concentrate on making the pot. If he makes the pot, he's guaranteed to be on the five ball. If he plays him at the right speed. Well, he just let it get away a little bit. But he didn't hit it too hard, to be honest. You know, I knew it was a little risky, but uh, he could not have played it much slower. And he has got the angle on the five to screw across the table. <sighs> and he missed it. Yeah. yeah I think oh, he got away with it. He floated it. I guess he's not happy with the cameraman that was yeah. obviously moving, you know, to give us a better view here. Yeah. In the commentator booth. Any selfish. <laughs> well, I, c I can understand it. I've been there several times, and, and I guess you, you too. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of the things when you get to the final stages of a tournament. Um, it sometimes it cannot be helped. The cameraman's got to do his job. Yeah, that's part of the game. As a player, you should not be aware of it. But now it's easy to say, and a lot harder to do. So he's got a, a cut down the rail on the six ball. Wants to be coming back to the other side of the table. What a great shot here. And that's brutal for Thomas. Yeah. But like we said before, that's nine ball. And yep. uh, it can happen. And it does happen. So I guess he has a little angle. Uh, I guess he has to force it, maybe stun it, to get the cue ball to the left side of the table. Oh, he's playing in the side. All right. Proved us wrong again here. Yeah. yeah, he has his own way <laughs> of going about the uh, shots sometimes. But it's just as, uh, as effective. <laughs> and with that, a nine ball takes a three to zero lead. 
and Thomas Angers. Thomas Anger has to start to do something here. He doesn't want to let him get away because I know personally that Imran is a great front runner. Mm -hmm. Once he gets his nose in front, he takes some stopping. Yep. And I wonder what is going through Thomas' mind right now. See, not too long ago, he lost in the finals to Christian Reimring in the Spanish Open. I wasn't there because I was at a different tournament in the United States, <coughs> but it, I heard that it was kind of a one, one-sided final where everything went for Christian and, and nothing for him. And yeah, yeah. I guess that's what he's probably thinking about right now. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to get these thoughts out of your mind when uh, you've had bad experiences in the past. Uh, and I was there watching that final, and it was um, it was all rhyming. Everything went his way. Um, and to be fair to Christian, he did take the chances, but um, a slight bit of fortune did play its part. And uh, I suppose you've got to take the the fortune when it comes your way, because yeah, sometimes absolutely. it's going to go against you. And a great shot up from Thomas here. Great shot. <laughs> Made that up easy. Yep. I had to check up a lot. <coughs> draw the cue ball back to get position to the two. Very difficult shots. He played it just perfect. And another good shot. Nice judgment of the weight. Oh, looks like it's gonna mark mark down one. Yep. Uh, not really much to do here now, just got to draw back a bit, stop the 7, stop the 8, or maybe just roll it a little further, a few inches and then you get a straight in 9 ball. Yeah, you can tell he's playing fast so that he's quite confident. Even using all the rails going around. And it's game number four. <laughs> Trailing by three wrecks to one. Imran to break. You can see there Imran trying to compose himself, thinking of the task ahead. Yeah. He's in the same position than he was in the semi-finals. He just needs to hold his serve. And then it's all him. Okay, you're gonna see that soft medium break. Probably three ball going in. Straight in, as well as the one ball, also for the and three ball and down time. again. Yep, and perfect shape on a four. Five is right there. The problem here is to get from the five to the six, because the fact that the seven is on the same rail, you want to be as straight as possible. Otherwise, you would have to go back and forth might be the better choice anyways but uh, then you have to hit the ball a lot harder and then there's always a possibility of of missing it and then it, or it just rattles in the pocket this five ball now the position he, he wants to come in between the six and the seven but he's got the side pocket there waiting so that's why he's got to be really careful with this yeah. You don't want to be too close to the six, and you don't want to be on top of the seven either. He's playing for the bank. Wow. You think he was playing I for the bank? No, I don't think he played for the bank. I think he just totally under it the ball. He was trying to just kill the white and come into the centre of the table, I think, and just leave a cut and to come 
back across, back to the table, to the other side, back for the seven, and uh, I just think he hasn't hit the ball. Oh, I was looking for a thin cut on the six ball there, but ooh, what a shot. Yeah. Very low percentage. Well, playing a bank shot is not an easy task either. Is it too thin? Yep, he overcut it. It's almost hard to do. And in a match, when you're playing uh, a guy, a, a guy like with Thomas's class, small errors like that can cost you dearly. And you now he's giving Thomas a chance to get right back into the match. Probably more angle than he wanted. So he wanted to bring that cue ball down the rail where the seven is, but now he's gonna just bring it back to the center of the table. Is that good enough? Yeah. Just draw it back two rails, play the nine in the same corner. Perfect. Thomas Engels winning the fifth game, trailing two X to three. Yeah, he has to break in game number six so he can level it up. Imran will definitely think about this great opportunity that he had. Yeah, I'm just looking at him in his chair now and uh, you can see there behind Thomas, he's looking at the floor, he's thinking about it. I think it will bother him for a few more wrecks or just yeah. trying to keep his mind focused. And he, he's, got a, he's got a strong character as uh, Imran. Oh, Ooh. there the big mistake. Yeah. Well, this this mistake by Thomas means that Imran has already forgot about that last mistake yep. now he's back at the table he drew it right into the side pocket and Thomas has just thrown the the game right back at Imran right there yeah he's finished a little he's got a little angle just to punch it away from the uh, the cushion but there we saw Thomas breaking with a much harder break uh, which is is the regular break for nine ball um, but the only downfall with it is that it sometimes the white can go astray more easily than the soft break well, he had more angle than we thought. Oh, but now he has the wrong angle to get down to the six. I didn't like that option, to be honest. Well. well he's making it tough on himself. Yeah, and now he's tied the... Eight and the nine. Eight and nine together, so... And he has a tough long shot on the six ball. Mm. That's not a hanger at all. Yeah, he just snatched at that one a little. Uh, he, didn't, he didn't come with a smooth delivery of the cue. And he can uh, <coughs> maybe, maybe now 
that Thomas is at the table, he might be glad that he put the 8 ball there on top of the 9. Because Thomas has still got a lot of work to do here. Yeah, the question is, is he trying to get kind of straight onto the 8 so he can play the combi combination? Or, or maybe it? take the 8 into the, the long pocket up or the that. rail, because it does go. He has got a nice angle just to drop in behind here if he wishes, or he could try and move. Just break him up. Just break him up, Run yeah. Into the eight. It's just how, how he feels. Every every player's got different different options for this sort of shot. Too much angle now just to leave it there. No, so I think he's going for breaking him up, yeah. Yeah. And he did it well. Nice queuing here on the 8-ball. And here's the chance. He's back in a match. <laughs> so Thomas Enger sinks the 9-ball. And now makes the score. Three racks each. from a very comfortable 3 nothing lead for Imran. Now they're both it's all square. And Imran had two chances in a row. He could have been 5-1 his favor. And, you know, he had could have had one hand at the trophy already. Even though it's quite early in the match. But uh, now it's open again. He still has, has, you know, a little edge because of that lag that he won right at the beginning. He's on the one ball, but the two ball sat right on top of the four ball, and I'm, I'm not sure if it goes into any pocket. Maybe into the right hand side pocket. So he wants to be leaving the cue ball where he is now. I doubt it, to be honest. Maybe in the side. Well, he has come down. Has he come down far enough? Here we see Neil's fine. The loser of the semi-finals against Imran Majid, number one ranked player in the world right now, number four in the Euro Tour rankings. He had the pocket, he had the side pocket. Yep. What about the four? The three is hanging, it should not be the biggest problem. But yeah. does he have a pocket for the for the four ball? Yeah, it looks yeah. like. Yeah, it goes. Passes the five, uh, the seven ball there. Oh. He just, yeah, he's okay. Yeah, for a second it looked like he overstruck it and was going too far, but. Uh, that was probably the best position for the ball actually to get good shape on a five. I can go maybe down the rail between the 7 and the 9, but I guess he's just drawn it back to the other rail. Um, I don't know. I like the other. Yeah, I like, I like to roll that shot. Yeah, me too. But he's alright. Imran Majid, winning game number seven. <laughs> and now leading four games to three. Thomas Engel to break in rack eight. Take 
could be the question here. Or will it be a, a run back and forth? Get it all. Get straight in on the one. Yeah, it looks like the one passes the four ball. So might be able to stop the ball even. Yeah, that looks like a rock map. Four and five are just there. Just move the cue ball anywhere in the middle of the table for the six. The seven is just hanging in the side. Just need to get over to the other side for the eight. That's the, the hardest part here. Oh, you, is he going to play for the side or, or the corner, Ralph? I guess he's drawn back for the corner. Want to be a little more straight, but I think now he has to go to the other side with the cue ball and play the nine ball in the same pocket. He's going to shoot the eight. Yep. Yeah, perfect. We are all square again. Four games each. Rec number nine. Imran Majid to break. And what looked and what looked uh, as though Imran would be running away with it with a three nil lead. We've ended up with a four-all scoreline, and uh, it's—I think it's the match that we expected. Yeah. We expected it's going to be a close one, and this could go all the way. Probably, yeah. So both players are breaking well. Yeah. Breaking balls. Yeah. I haven't seen a dry break yet. <laughs> no, this time he's making a two-ball. Question is. Do they get positions on a lowest ball? And so far, <laughs> they managed to do so. Good shape on a three here. Yeah, it's another road map, Ralph. Yep. That's the you know that's the thing here. Yeah, it seems like you no know, Imran is not taking any chances or any risks on a break. So I think Thomas is more of, you know he has more risk on a break, breaking hard. So you know he might end up with a with a tougher position sooner or later. Not not saying that he should break soft too, but uh, that's at least what it looks like right now. Yeah, I mean you speak to Thomas a lot, Ralph. Um, why do you think he's doing the firm break rather than a soft break when the soft break's obviously working? Well, he he doesn't like it. You know, same same as me. Even though I was, you know, kind of soft breaking in this tournament here, but as long as he makes balls with a hard break, you know, he feels more comfortable doing it and you know, getting a better cubo control. And he just hates to break breaks the ball soft. And Imran wins game number nine. Going again in the lead, five games to four. Well, I mean, you know, this discussion goes could go on and on. You know, what makes more sense? I guess if you're not making balls with a heartbreak, then it would be real stupid not to change. But as long as you're making balls, 
and stick to your brake that you are using now all your life yeah of course it's and only it because of these conditions with the new cloth yeah. and, the it balls. and it worked for him throughout the whole tournament you know. yeah yeah never change your winning winning thing of course you know he seems losing and just when ball. just when you said there hadn't been a dry break yep there it is there it is So a long one ball in front of him run. But pretty straightforward to get shape on two. That's not an easy out here. That's a lot of work. First to make that tough one ball. You know, once you get to the six ball, then you know, I mean he needs to make to get a good angle on the seven. Nice shot. I guess if that seven ball will pass the eight on the way down here, then that's the that's the key point. If not, then he has a lot of work. Yeah. Try to get again in between two balls where the side pocket is right. Yeah. Interfering. But from here it looks like there's enough space. Well he's come a little short on this one also. Mm -hmm. Still not a problem. But now, as you said Ralph, we're getting to the crunch in this rack. And that's the 6 to the 8 to the 7, sorry. I think if he leaves the, the cue ball high on the six, he can roll the... Well, he's come a bit far, but I thought he might be able to roll down towards the eight ball. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if he has looked at the option to play the seven. Or squeeze it you know, in between the eight and, and the cushion. The cushion, yeah. Or oh, he might have looked right from the start and figured out now mm. it's not going to pass, I don't know. Well, he's got to go across table and back again here. Plays it well. Yeah, that's a perfect. <laughs> well, he doesn't seem to have any nerves. He's a real cool customer here in that final match, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. And he wins game number ten. Going again in the two game lead, six to four. And break it. In rack eleven. So once again he broke Thomas's surf. And he's got his nose in front again. Can he keep it in front this time? That's the question. It might be a very, very Decisive game now. Yep, yep. It's a big break, this. Yep. If you could win this one here, you go on a three game lead, only two games away from the victory. Let's see. Okay, I predict three ball in the corner. There it goes. One ball as well. There's the two. And there's the shape. And look at this nice layout here. Wow. You should thank the referee for putting the balls in that in that order p this time. Because especially when you when you break the ball soft, it makes a huge difference where the balls are located when you break them off. And he's got a little bit of angle on this five ball. He wanted to be straight in on it. Um, shouldn't be a problem. But um, it's a problem that he didn't need to have. Uh, if, yeah. he, if he would have been straight, he could have just stopped the white still. 
and had a straightforward run out but now he's got to leave a little more angle than he wanted on the six ball so I guess he's playing with a lot of inside English trying to come in between the seven and the nine yeah he's spinning it down the table yeah. good check <laughs> and has the angle to get out for a position of the eight which is the most important here straight in just screw it back a few inches and he'll be straight on the nine in the opposite corner there you go Well, Imran Majid winning game 11, now leading by three games, the score of 7-4. Well, Thomas now has his hands full, that's for sure. Yeah, it's an uphill struggle now. Um, it's virtually the same match as Imran's semi-final when he played Niels Fyan. Niels was breaking, hoping to run his own, own rack. But at the same time, trusting to a little bit of luck or unluck for Imran, hoping that he doesn't make a ball or doesn't get shape on the one from the break. And the hard break, two balls down. And again, no shape. Yep, that's that's the brutality of the game. No. It looks a bit frustrated, I can tell. I know Thomas for. I don't know, 25 years now, we've been roommates, not all the time, but for many, many years. And uh, I know him probably better than anybody else in the poor world. And I know he doesn't like it at all. But that's part of the game, you know. not over until the fat lady sings. <laughs> well, where do you push out to? Or do you see another opportunity here besides pushing out? Well, of I think it's, it's got to be a push out. Of course you could kick at it, maybe two rails. And you know, there's a chance of maybe making the two, and then if you hit the second rail first, the cue ball probably would go back up. But with the seven and the and the four, four there, ball, yeah, be going towards them. Well, he's leaving oh, he's Imran hooked, pushing out to that place there. But I don't know what he has in mind, to be honest. Let's yeah. see if the cameraman gives us a better angle here to judge this one. Now he gives it straight back. Thomas is going to jump. Yep. Yeah. Well, he pushed to a jump shot. So he's trying to pot this, is he, Ralph? I guess, but I don't know. I mean, he's he he's might got just got jump to a safe, just try to leave the cue ball there and bring the two ball up table. Up table. Oh, he drew it back right into the corner pocket. Yeah, he didn't hit, hit it full enough. Just too much side spin. He's in run the big opportunity now with ball in hand. Yeah, as silly as it sounds, that could be his last shot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if he runs out this, he runs out this, and then it's his break. break Inman's yeah. break. To be honest, Imran looks so composed. Yeah. I can't see him making a mistake from here, this rack. No, he looks very, very cool. And sometimes you know you can see it in, in the eyes of the players that they are so sure about you know nothing can go wrong anymore. Oh, 
But you should never take it for granted, that's for sure. I've seen the worst things happen. Yeah, he's struggling a little bit here, but... Yeah. Cheated the pocket there. But he's straight in on the nine. And that's 8-4. He's only one lap away now. From winning his first Euro Tour title. Yeah, and well, now Thomas, well, what does he need? Would be a miracle it good enough? It would be a miracle, yeah, yeah. And I think he knows it. Yeah, and looking at Imran, I mean, he's just looking on the floor, mm. and keeping his nerves together and trying to stay focused and... Having now three chances on his own break. Yeah, it's massive. Yeah. And still a chance if Thomas, even on Thomas's break, because you're not guaranteed to run out. Two balls down, but hooked on a two ball. But the fact that it is quite off the rail much, he can, he can use rail first as quite a big angle to work with and it's close to the pocket also yep. so the question is can he get position on a three yeah he's got a little bit of traffic to uh, avoid probably not the six but uh, yeah it depends on how how he hits it or maybe just slow roll and leave it there for the three in the side not even go that that far Yep. Yeah. That's what it looks like. Yeah. I think that was the <coughs> the best option. Yeah, before. definitely, yeah. With the four hanging right in front of the, the other side. on the wrong side but I mean it was it I was think he can uh, screw screw it in between the six and the nine and come two rails back up for the mm -hmm. five well the question is if you're trying to go all the way on the other side of the table to play the five on the side or you try to get straight in to play it in a corner yeah he was, he was trying to get on the other side and now he's playing the three rails again. Just needs to make sure not to hit the eight ball on the way there. Yep. It's not an easy one. And obviously, make sure he's hard enough because he could hook himself behind yep. the nine here. This looks good. Yep. Well, only three balls away from his first victory. And, uh, 2006 Dynamic Italian Open here in Montfalcone. I guess that's it. Yeah, he's not making any mistake from here now. Winning 9 to 4 with a great performance against Thomas Engels. Well, we saw another great match, Daryl. Yeah, superb, and I think. Uh, big relief. A friend. big, big, big relief. Yeah, I know him run well, and uh, he's been waiting for this yep. for a long time. And I haven't seen too many emotions from him, to be honest, in the last couple of years. No, but he's showing a few now. Yeah, he's well, that's great. Now. You know, that's, that's what the sport is all about. Well, great shooting in both the semi-finals and the finals, and uh, well, well, de well deserved. Yeah, no definitely about that. well deserved. Yeah. Sven Paltrich, would you please come over behind me? Sven Paltrich. Well, I guess that's for it. 
here. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, if you just give us now another quick look at the winner of the 2006 the Dynamic Italian Open. When we give here we see the tournament promoter. And will be standing here. I like that you all stay there because of the camera, so it's much better. MC for this event here, yes. David Morris. I guess we're going to stay on the show here for the prize giving ceremony. He's going to need another suitcase for his trophy to put on the uh, plane. Yeah, that's a nice big trophy. Well, as we just heard, we're not going to stay over for the prize giving ceremony. So, uh, from here, out of the commentary booth, Daryl Peach and Ralph Suke says bye. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a uh, very nice year in front of a packed house in Montfalcone and uh, with a first time Euro Tour winner Imran Majid. Thanks again and uh, I'll leave the last words to Daryl. Yeah, a uh, superb tournament once again and uh, I think a deserved winner Imran Majid for his first uh, Euro Tour title and uh, I'd just like to thank my co-commentator Ralph Suke um, and it's goodbye from me. All right, bye-bye.